Well, that, that was great. Um, Mark, can you take a few questions? Sure, yeah. Yeah, the pyrotitis is magnetic. <laughs> Yep, uh, we went in, we did, I think it was 400 by 80 uh, grid. We, uh, we collect both calcrete samples and fine fraction samples. We do calcrete for gold and fine fraction for base metals. And the, the anomaly we got was about 2 k's long, about three or 400 ppm nickel and copper about 10 times background. So it, it was sort of in your face sort of stuff. What's the original GSWA model like? Um, I couldn't tell you offhand. Um, somebody in the audience might, might know. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? 271. <laughs> We might renovate it, but we won't move. Okay. <laughs> What's making the magnetic anomaly? Um, it seems to be just a small amount of magnetite in, in a particular unit around the rim. But it, the, the amount of magnetite we've found doesn't seem to be sufficient to explain that anomaly. So I don't know if there's some sort of remnant magnetic effect in there or something weird like that. I was going to ask a very similar question. With such a large lap holding, the series is gone. Did that stand out as something very unusual compared to all the rest of the main models? Um, we, we sort of chose, spotted about five or six things that looked um, of interest. Not all the same, and this was in, in the magnetic data. Um, and what we were looking for were just things that were, appeared to be uh, punching up through the rest of the, the sequence, as, as opposed to stratigraphy. And uh, the other four targets we have, we have um, soil anomalies of various levels over them, and we're just starting to do um, EM work on those. And the, the EM work we do is all ground EM, we, we never do airborne EM. Um, I've, 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 I've <laughs> I think in the gold fields where you've got a laterite, a lot of laterite, I've often found that when you do partial extraction techniques, you, you create a lot of noise uh, that's been smeared around in the laterite profile and so on. In areas where the cover is quite sterile, I think it works well because you get a better signal to noise ratio and fewer red herrings, as it were. The soils out here, there's not much of a laterite profile out here in terms of ferry creek and things like that. They're lean, hungry, calcareous soils. So it, it may be the sort of area that is quite amenable to that technique. Well, going back um, a year ago, I was just uh, targeting on the books, and were there other targets on the books also? Um, yeah, it was a target. We had five targets on the books 18 months ago. Um, the, uh, we chose the eye first, we, we did the, uh, I'm just thinking of the timing now, we did the, an initial, we did the soil sampling December 2010, January 2011, we um, sort of cogitated on that for a while, in the middle of 2011 we, did, we drilled half a dozen reconnaissance RC holes. Uh, in September 2011, we did the co-funded diamond hole, um, and that was quite important actually because although it, it was not where the deposit actually is, it, what it did do, the, the combination of those six RC holes and the diamond hole, is it showed us we had a thick blanket of copper and nickel enrichment in the regolith, which we weren't sure was just lateritic or real. Um, but there was a lot of copper in it, so it, it sort of made it suspicious. And there wasn't enough nickel in the rocks beneath that, that enrichment zone to explain the degree of enrichment we saw. So we thought, oh, it's, there's something, 
suspicious about this. It can't just be explained by being lasseries that can reach them. And in the diamond hole, although we didn't intersect even the rocks that host uh, Nova, what we did see was very small um, zones with magmatic uh, sulphides, with pentlandite, pyrotite, and chalcopyrite, with nice igneous textures and low uh, textures and so on. So it gave us enough of a, a clue to keep on persisting. Uh, unfortunately, when we were drilling that hole, there's not much groundwater here. The rig ran out of water. We were carting the long distance for water. Then it rained, and ironically, the water truck got bogged. <laughs> so we had so much rain that we ran out of water. Um, then, uh, then it sort of... Uh, we, we were licking our wounds from that, because that cost us a lot of money, that hole. Um, and uh, we came back in March, April time to do the EM, I think it was. We did a quick reconnaissance uh, drilling program and again extended that lateritic, so-called lateritic blanket. Uh, and then we came in and bit the bullet in, in July. Because we, you know, it had gone so well, we had a nice mag structure, we had a great soil anomaly, we had magmatic sulphides in some of the, uh, the rocks from the diamond hole. We, uh, we had these three booming conductors and we were at the point where we were thinking it can't be this straightforward. And when we went in to drill those three holes, I mean, it was with some trepidation, you know, had, typically in the gold fields, you know, 99 out of 100 conductors are black shales or something like that. And so you, you sort of go in there expecting to fail, but persisting anyway. And, and no one was more amazed than us when we drilled the first hole and, and hit nickel sulphides. In fact, even when we drilled it, and we saw the sulphides, often it can be difficult to detect, to, you know, to discriminate pentlandite from pyrazite. But we had a lot of chalcopyrite in there. And even then we didn't want to let ourselves believe that it could be that straightforward. That's why I raced down to Perth at midnight and grabbed Creasy and his XRF gun and, uh, and zapped it. And we started getting readings of you know, 4 to 7% nickel. And everybody was, was smiling apart from Creasy. And someone was like, come on, Mark, smile. You've got to be having a good time. He said, the last time I had a good time was in 1976. <laughs> Um, about four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, ironically, we had a query from the stock exchange about our cash position. So I, I'd gone to Norseman uh, to go out to the drill program. I lodged the our quarterly report from Norseman, um, then drove out out of uh, mobile coverage. We made the discovery, got back with the samples, only to find a query from the stock exchange on why we were running out of money. So when, when we said, oh, it's because we discovered something, it just looked really contrived. <laughs> <laughs> How big is this thing got to be before you make a decision to mine? And if you do make a decision to mine, will you have a, a sudden size of plant on site? About a month ago. <laughs> Zero outcrop, you can't see anything. Even now, when we know exactly where the, the deposit is, uh, you can walk around on the surface and you just wouldn't have a clue. It's, it's really scary. And it's not like it's concealed, it's residual. Uh, uh, and um, it, there's just nothing to give you a clue. It's only 50 metres down and you just not know it was there. Sorry. Um, not seen any chromite layers and very few PGMs and I guess these systems tend to be bimodal. You tend to get a lot of PGMs or very few and we have very few but we've got the good cobalt as compensation. Oh, look, we, we still don't know. Um, most of our drilling is very focused on, on Nova itself so far, so we're not really getting much context. That will come with time. Um, but it, it's, it's really tricky to say. And because the rocks are all nisic, um, you don't get specific units that you can 
you know, draw dots between it as, as stratigraphic horizons. It's just all gradational changes. To the extent that when we, when we were drilling that first hole, all we, particularly in RC, because you've just got drill chips and have not caught, um, you're looking at it and you're thinking, what the hell is this? And you think, oh, it's just sort of, uh, it's nice, why, why are we drilling this hole? So we, we don't really know yet, but, um, you know, our understanding will come as, as we, I think, we spread our wings and do those other things. Uh, another question? Yeah. What would you achieve by geological mapping? Surface geological mapping? Yes. Um, well, there's not much to map. No, not really. There's, at the Fraser Range you have a sort of central central spine, uh, which is predominantly granite sticking out the ground forming the range, but then when you get onto the eastern flanks, it's just all flat soil covered woodland with, with very little sticking out the ground. The GSWA guys, if, if any are here, probably have seen more than we have, but um, it's, uh, you know, the gold fields is, is pretty well covered for most of it, but this makes that look like northern Canada or something. Oh look, we consider it. We probably want to try and characterise what, what Nova looks like in, in that data. But our, our default position, if you like, is, is we always prefer ground the end, simply because you can get more juice into the ground, albeit it's more laborious and slower and costlier per square k or whatever. Uh, um, oh look, probably, and again, our information is only from that part of it we've, we've sampled in the drilling, so we don't really go way out into the hanging wall, uh, so it's difficult to, to say there, but um, yeah, you know, a lot of the rock is 0.1, um, 0.2% nickel. And that's not as um, silicates or olive because there, there isn't any. It's as cloud sulphide. Can you comment on the conductance of these conductors and to what degree higher model conductance is related to better drill performance? Um, the, the original three conductors we defined were, were all very good. One was the most extensive. Number two was very just as conductive but deeper and therefore more subtle and, and even more so with uh, conductor three. The, the things around Nova that we've been doing recently, which is conductors four and five, are, are very much poor relations of those. Uh, we're just drilling there because it's in the vicinity of Nova and that may play a part in any mining plan that we've got there. But the, the, um, the other conductors are pretty emphatic. Um, Perhaps uh, Bill's wife can describe them. <laughs> they're, 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 they're massive bullseye targets. Um, you know, you don't need to, to sort of tease the data very much. Yeah, you're getting the. Uh slow down from getting environmental approvals for your drilling programs or are things going uh, well in that respect? The DMP have been absolutely great. Uh, we've been getting one week turnarounds on POWs. Um, it's, yeah, it's been great. That's all I can say. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe we'll finish it up there. I, 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 I get a strong feeling that this story is not over yet. And uh, I'd like to personally uh, invite you to come and speak to us next November for an update on NOVA. Put that in your calendar. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>